Hi, it's Gathreed. Today, I'm presenting a furniture construction project. A small, simple chest of drawers made from 15 medium thick planks with drawers. In this video, I'll show you how, starting from a well thought out sketch. You can model drawers using very simple woodworking pieces. How to create the main structure of the furniture. and also how to create a small plan for the elements you want. I'm introducing a memo associated with the video to help you remember the essential points for a similar project. So, you'll discover all that, along with tips, strategies, and tricks used in FreeCAD. So you can have something concrete when you want to start your project. You can download it from the link you'll find in the description. And with this video, you'll also find a non-public video that you can access only via the link below. It's a long video where I explain in detail the different operations for this project. For a project like this, my advice is to think carefully before diving into modeling. You need to know what you want to do, so start with the good old method, paper and pencil. Draw and define what you want. That's step one of the project. The second thing is to know what materials you'll use and how you'll manufacture your product. Here, we're doing woodworking, so we'll use planks with specific dimensions given by the materials. I'll be working with 15mm and 12mm thick, raw wood panels. These dimensions are determined by the material supply, so you have to work with them. Before modeling, Make sure you have this clear in your mind, as well as the assembly elements. I'll be using wood screws and dowels, so I won't need to model them, but they will define the construction strategy. Now regarding the FreeCAD strategy, this is not a car engine, so only the drawers are mobile. This allows for simpler modeling, where we'll create the main frame of the furniture, and the two different drawers. And then just assemble them at the end without needing the assembly workshop. For the workshops, I'll mainly use part design and part workshops to create simple copies and some tricks I'll show you. For the assembly, for example, for the drawer, we'll simply use the transform tool to manually position the parts in the right place. For a simple project like this, it's much easier than imposing constraints with the assembly workshop. I forgot to mention earlier that in the bonus, I'm including the three files I present here. So you can study them on your own. It's the best way to really learn. One of the key elements of this project is using the subshape binder to connect and build parts based on the faces of other parts. I'll give you a quick demonstration to show how it works. Let's say we're creating a new drawer. We create our body, use a reference plane, and now we'll make the drawer face. The drawer is 415 mm wide and 65 meter high, and I like to center it. It's 15 mm thick, and I'll add a small radius with a router, about 10 mm. It's a good habit to name your bodies, so this is the front face.
Now if you want to create the side piece that connects here and rests on this face. You create a new body, name it side, and select the face from the external geometry. Then use the subshape binder tool, hide the front face body, and you can use this face as a reference. You can keep the subshape binder synchronized with the original part or detach it. If you keep it synchronized, any changes to the original part will follow, but for complex constructions, it's better to detach it to avoid cyclic links. Now, I'll use this face to create the side panel, which is 12 meter thick and positioned 15 meter from the side. If I extrude it, it creates the side panel directly aligned with the front face without needing additional assembly. What's interesting is that you can also use this part to build other parts, like positioning holes for dowels. Now I'll create the dowel holes, 6 mm in diameter, aligned vertically. I use the pocket tool to create a 25 mm deep hole in the side panel. To ensure the holes are in the right place, I'll reactivate the front face and create another subshape binder. This way I can ensure the holes are correctly positioned on the other side. Now I'll use the pocket tool again to create a 10 mm UT deep hole on the other side. You'll notice that I intentionally place the front panel centrally to exploit symmetries. Now I use the mirror function to create the other side panel, saving time by avoiding manual placement. Next I'll finish the side panel by adding grooves for the bottom and sides. The bottom groove is 5 mm deep, and I'll also add a small hole for screws. Now the side panel is complete, and I'll use the mirror function to create the opposite side panel. This way you don't have to manually create each part, saving time. Now I'll show you another useful tool, the simple copy function. If you have two identical parts, like the base and top of the furniture, you can use the simple copy tool in the part workshop. This creates an identical solid that isn't linked to the original, so you can modify it without affecting the first part. Another thing I want to show is how to use the transform tool to position elements without complicating things with the assembly workshop. For a static piece of furniture like this, it's much easier to position the parts manually. Finally, I'll show you the array tool from the draft workshop, which allows you to create linear repetitions of a body. This is useful for creating multiple identical parts, like draw guides, without placing each one manually. Now, I'll introduce the TechDraw workshop for creating plans. You can create a blank page or user template and then add views of your model. Choose the scale and then add dimensions and annotations to your plan. Once your model is complete, you can create the final plan with all the necessary details.
Finally, I'll show you how to create a simple assembly using the assembly workshop. You can add constraints to position the parts, like a sliding constraint for the drawers. This allows you to move the drawer freely along the guides. To summarize, for this kind of project, first, know what you want to do. Start with a sketch on paper, consider material constraints, and then move to 3D modeling. I've shown you a basic construction strategy using part design, simple copies, and mirror parts. I've also shown you how to use the subshape binder, the array tool, and how to create a simple assembly. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you liked or didn't like. I hope the concept of having a memo sheet is useful. Let me know if you need a longer video with more details. Thanks, and see you soon.